HPV and cancer risk. Human papillomavirus, known as HPV, has had a large impact on health in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control reports that over 79 million Americans have some type of HPV infection, with around 14 million new infections each year. It is expected that about 80% of Americans will get an HPV infection at some point in their lives. HPV affects both men and women. There are over 200 types of HPV viruses. Most have no known long-term effects on your body and are considered low risk. High risk HPV infections can cause serious health problems and lead to cell changes. These cell changes may cause cancer to develop if the HPV infection stays in your body for a long period. Currently, there are over a dozen known high-risk types of HPV that can cause cancer. Of these, HPV types 16 and 18 are most commonly known to cause certain cancers. HPV-related cancers can happen in different areas of the body. Most often, these cancers are found in a woman's cervix, cancers of the head and neck, which include cancer of the tonsils, base of the tongue, and back of the tongue. Other cancers linked to HPV include cancer of the penis, cancer of the vagina or vulva, which is the area outside a woman's vagina, including the labia and clitoris, and cancer of the anus, which is the part of your body where your intestine exits your body. It may take many years after you are infected with HPV for the infection to lead to cancer. Some researchers believe it takes between 10 and 30 years from the time of the infection until the first tumor forms. There are certain risk factors that may increase the chance of an HPV infection leading to cancer. These include if you were young when you first had sexual activity, if you had multiple sex partners, had unprotected sex, or other high-risk sexual activities. Use of tobacco or abuse of alcohol can also increase your chance of HPV infection. You are also at a higher risk if you have a weak immune system. Medicines, like those taken after an organ transplant, may lower your immune system, as can other health problems, like HIV or AIDS. Risk for cancer of the mouth and throat is also higher for those who have poor oral hygiene. HPV can be passed to someone else if there has been direct contact, such as skin-to-skin -skin contact, most often with the mouth or genital areas. There is a higher risk of HPV being spread if the skin that has been touched has an open area, such as a cut, or if the skin is irritated. HPV can be passed from person to person through saliva, vaginal sex, anal sex, oral sex, or sharing of certain sex toys. Symptoms depend on which type of HPV caused your infection. Many types of HPV cause no symptoms. Most people do not know if they have the virus. Often, there are no changes you can see in your body when you get this infection. As a result, HPV may be passed on to others without anyone knowing. It is important to understand if a partner has an HPV infection or an HPV-related cancer, it does not mean that they have been unfaithful recently. They could have carried the infection for many years without knowing. Low-risk HPV infections may cause warts or unusual growths. These warts can appear on your hands, genital areas, and other body parts. They usually will go away without treatment once your immune system fights off the infection. These warts do not turn into cancer. When one of the high-risk types of HPV infection stays in your body and is not destroyed by your immune system, it can lead to a type of cancer. 
The symptoms are first noted when the cancer or tumor begins to grow. These symptoms are based on the location of the cancer. Let's review the symptoms for the most common HPV cancers for both women and men. The Centers for Disease Control tells us that cervical cancer is the most common HPV-related cancer in women. HPV is believed to cause between 70 to 90 percent of cervical cancers. Symptoms of cancer of the cervix usually surface only with advanced disease. These include unexpected bleeding. This may include bleeding after sexual intercourse back, leg, or pelvic pain, fatigue, weight loss, or loss of appetite, vaginal discomfort, foul-smelling discharge, or a leg that becomes swollen. Another commonly seen HPV-related cancer is found in certain areas of the head and neck. These cancers are seen in men three to five times more often than in women. The most common symptom is a painless neck mass. Some of the other symptoms of cancer in these areas include an ulcer or sore in the mouth or throat that does not heal in two to three weeks. A red, white, or black area on the soft tissue of your mouth. Difficult or painful swallowing. A swollen but painless tonsil. Pain when chewing or swallowing, a persistent sore throat or hoarse voice, a swelling or lump in the mouth, a painless lump felt on the outside of the neck which has been there for over two weeks, constant coughing, an earache on one side that persists for more than a few days, or weight loss. HPV can also cause cancer in other parts of your body. However, these types of cancer are less common than HPV-related cancers in the cervix, head, or neck. There is no known treatment for HPV. In most cases, HPV goes away on its own in one to two years, as your immune system bites off the infection. If medical treatment is needed, it will focus on the health problems caused by the HPV. This may include treatments to get rid of warts or to check and manage changes in the cervix or treat any cancer that may develop. Research is underway to develop HPV screening tests for use in the future. Currently, the only way to check for HPV is a test available when examining a woman's cervix. Women should have regular cervical pap tests. These tests look for cellular changes in the cervix, including those caused by HPV. During this exam, your doctor will talk to you if HPV testing is also needed. There are ways you can lower your chance of getting an HPV infection. This includes making a choice to not have sex, called abstinence, Limiting the number of sex partners you have. Choosing a sex partner who has had no other or few sex partners. This can reduce your exposure to HPV as it may have been passed to your partner from others. Condoms help but do not offer complete protection against getting an HPV infection. Skin not covered by the condom can still be exposed to the HPV virus. The best way to prevent some types of HPV infection is to get the HPV vaccine. There are different types of HPV vaccines. Your doctor will choose the vaccine best for you. These HPV vaccines stop certain types of new HPV infections. The HPV types prevented by these vaccines are linked to genital warts and many of the HPV-related cancers. Having this vaccine can lower the chance of getting certain cancers in the future. The vaccine will not treat an HPV infection that you currently have or had in the past. Even if you had an earlier HPV infection, it is recommended that you get the vaccine. 
the vaccine can offer protection for some of the other types of this virus. It is best to get an HPV vaccine when you are young and before you are sexually active. Research shows that a person's response to this vaccine is better at a younger age than if they are older. Based on age and other factors, this vaccine may be given in a series of two or three shots, each at least six months apart. Currently, the Centers for Disease Control suggests HPV vaccinations be given to both boys and girls starting at around age 11. After age 26, these vaccinations are no longer routinely provided. Check with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for the most recent information on HPV vaccination. There are times when you should not get the HPV vaccine. This includes when you are pregnant. However, getting pregnant after getting the HPV vaccine is safe. If you are ill, if you have certain allergies, including allergies to yeast or latex, or if you have had an allergic reaction to a previous dose of the HPV vaccine. Your doctor will explain the possible side effects of the vaccine. Most side effects are very mild. The HPV vaccines have passed safety testing and have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the World Health Organization's Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety. We hope this information has helped you to better understand HPV and cancer risk. Write down any questions you might have for your healthcare team and bring them with you to each appointment. We are honored to care for you during your cancer treatment. Thank you for choosing the James.